How's it going everyone? Ben here. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of having a well-balanced nutrition plan when it comes to healing after having a major surgery. Now, although most people that will be watching this video is going to hone specifically on surgeries that causes external scars, I want to prioritize the fact that even if you get surgery that doesn't have any form of external scar like laparoscotic surgery, still should require this kind of nutrition plan so that we're able to heal adequately and efficiently so our bodies can adjust to the changes that surgery causes us but our bodies can also bounce back to pre-surgical levels. Now I want to emphasize that even though this type of nutrition that I'm going to highlight is going to talk is going to specifically talk about after surgery, having this nutritional plan before surgery about maybe a month before can actually really skyrocket your healing process. So definitely take that into account. So the first thing you really do want to prioritize when you are prepping for surgery and after surgery when it comes to nutrition is that you should really think about eating more calories. I know and I know everyone gets scared about eating more calories because that they'll gain weight, but I really encourage everyone who has that mentality to stray away from that. Gaining weight is not a bad thing and losing weight is not always a good thing. So after surgery, you shouldn't really prioritize staying slim. You should prioritize recovering from the surgery that you've undergone through. So definitely think about increasing the amount of calories so that your body has those calories to use to build you back up, build those things that have been broken down by surgery to replenish that and to build it back up to pre-surgical levels. And if you're wondering how many extra calories should I be eating, you should be eating 15 to 20 calories per pound of body weight that you are at. So I am 140 pounds. So if we do the 20, the higher end of the 20, I should be eating about 2,800 calories a day, which honestly for me is a lot because I eat a max of maybe 1,900 to 2,000 calories a day, but it's only for the one week before surgery and the two weeks after surgery. And maybe even more if you're taking a while to heal, you should honestly think about keeping an anabolic, anabolic means building up, amount of calories until you have fully healed from your surgery and maybe a few weeks after that as well. So now that you're eating more calories, what next? What should you include in your diet to make sure it's nutritionally sound for wound healing? So there are three major ingredients when it comes to proper wound healing and the number one ingredient is collagen. Collagen is a type of protein that is on our skin, on our bones, on our cartilage, but more importantly, collagen is what helps us heal from wounds. Your Fibroblasts, which is a type of cell in your body after a scar is made, come to the area of where the wound is and flicker on some collagen everywhere and, and the collagen hardens up and that's what becomes the scar. And to have proper wound healing, you need to have proper collagen formation. If you don't have the necessary ingredients in your body to make collagen, you're not going to make efficient collagen. You're going to have poor wound healing and the scar is going to look worse off. So. Collagen is primarily made of amino acids, which are proteins. So all you have to do is increase your protein intake. You should try to aim between 6 to 11 ounces of protein a day, maybe even more. The more protein you eat, the better it is. Actually, there are no scientific studies that show that, that large amount of protein affects any other organs unless you have renal disease, which is kidney disease. So if you don't have kidney disease, you don't have to worry about having an upper limit to protein. Take as much protein as you can because the more protein you have, the more collagen that can be synthesized to your fi from your fiber rest to make scar tissue. Now collagen doesn't isn't just built with protein. In order to make collagen, you need enzymes and those enzymes also require certain vitamins to work efficiently. And the two big vitamins that I'm going to really hone in on is zinc and vitamin C. Zinc and vitamin C are part of the important enzymes that help make collagen. So you really need to start having a nutritional profile that highlights vitamin C and zinc in your diet. So eat a lot of fruits that are citrusy and zinc is in all sorts of leafy vegetables. So prioritize eating leafy vegetables and also leafy vegetables have fiber, which is really good after surgery because you may be constipated after taking all those anesthetics. I personally had to get an enema, Ugh. TMI, but I did. And um, so eating bulky vegetables will help you with constipation as well. Honestly, I'm gonna be real. It was really gross, so please, please eat your fiber. So now you have a great diet. You have 
increase the number of calories, you're eating lots of chicken breasts, and you're eating lots of leafy greens and fruits to get that vitamin C and zinc. What now? Well, there are foods that you should actually avoid, and those are pro-inflammatory foods. I really recommend that you do a Google search on pro-inflammatory foods out there because I can't fully cover them all in this video, but they include things like cheese, milk, any sort of dairy products, and also enriched grains such as rice, white rice, can increase the amount of inflammation in your body. And the reason why that's bad is because after surgery, that area of the surgical site, it becomes inflamed, whether or not it's internal or external. So that inflammation actually delays wound healing because it brings in bacteria, it brings in other sorts of immune modulators in your body that release chemicals that are actually harmful to the surgery site. So when you take, when you eat pro-inflammatory foods, you're insinuating more inflammation in that area. So you want to avoid that. And actually, if you want to go a step ahead, eating turmeric or curcumin, uh, adding it to your soup, tea, water, hot beverage, or any type of foods. If you eat Indian foods, you're having lots of turmeric already in your foods because I'm Indian and the food is delicious because of the turmeric. But adding turmeric to your diet is incredibly helpful with depressing inflammation because turmeric has natural anti-inflammatory processes. You know those mediators I talked about that increase inflammation in your body? Well, turmeric actually inhibits them. They don't completely Turmeric doesn't completely stop them, but it slows them down for you to be in a more anti-inflammatory state when you are healing from a wound. And lastly, I really want to emphasize the use of supplements if you are nutritionally deficient. And I mean, really think about what kind of nutrition you're putting into your body pre and post surgery and what kind of nutrition you're putting into your body now if you're watching this video because most Americans we don't have a nutritionally dense diet even I don't and I try my best to include that so definitely think about supplementing vitamins into your diet so that you can increase the amount of minerals and vitamins and proteins available to your body when you are wound healing I personally when I was going through surgery healing, I personally ate vitamin C tablets around 1000 milligrams and around 25 milligrams of zinc when I was healing. And of course, I kind of decided to go on a high protein diet for the next couple of years because I'm bodybuilding and I'm seeing the proper benefits of protein and there's not that many adverse effects. So I'm prioritizing protein in my diet right now. So I didn't really have to worry about increasing the protein when I was going through surgery. However, I will say if you're not an active person, you might want to bring that protein level down once you're fully healed because too much protein that you're not using builds up in your body and causes things like gout and other systemic issues. So if you are living an act if you are living an active lifestyle and you're taking high protein, I don't think you should stop eating high protein because it's building up your body every time you break it down. But there you have it. That's my slightly TLDR on what you should be focusing on on your nutrition when you're having surgery and recovering from it for proper wound healing. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this interesting. Feel free to like, subscribe, share this video to someone who actually needs this information because I think my videos are very informational. And follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my life and ask me questions because I'm pretty active on my social medias and I like to talk to people and I like to talk to viewers. So I'll see you on the next one. This is Ben.